Future State Superman of Metropolis issue one is up next, and this is uh Sean Lewis and Brandon M. Easton writing, and then again there's a bunch of articles. There's three stories here, so this is not three full length uh, stories. This is one full length story and two sort of ten pages, give or take. Uh, so I was going to say I didn't really like this at all. Uh, I oh man, I I liked the uh mr miracle story and that's the the, that's the best one i'll give the the mr miracle one has the best art i think and was the most interesting um i think there's some nice ideas in the main story with john but i think it is it really reminds me of a lot actually it reminds me a lot of the early rebirth superwoman where there's some really cool ideas but the whole thing's overwritten in a shorty read i like this a lot (laughs) <laughs> well so, I'm, I'm glad cool. someone did you know what Matt? Well, i'm glad yeah. i'm glad um, <laughs> and, and it's not just for the reasons connor thinks right like oh yeah um, yeah I, I already predicted matt's panel of the week is from this story <laughs> and i'll just i'll spoil that and it's not it's close but there's other things that it, happen it, in other books this was definitely in in consideration though yeah definitely um what i like that i feel that uh who's, who's the writers on this first one is uh, sean lewis yeah. what I, what i like about is that it feels so this is a future state book right Mm -hmm. it feels like stuff has happened since and that this is a very real world to you know to john right it doesn't feel like they just add yeah in fact before before we go on i'll just i'll explain the context of what this metropolis is like just briefly Mm -hmm. uh so there is a basically in john's early days of superman his first year of Mm -hmm. superman he fought the real brainiac right right and it was his only time really doing it because after that brainiac getting but this company took over and sort of like built this new tech out of brainiac which has become known as brain cells this this tech and it's been kind of starting to take over people which is kind of the current problem that john's facing but there's also this heavy military angle where they're coming to get the brain cells and there's going to be a lot of you know uh, collateral damage yeah there's a company called trojan which i just took Uh, as this, this is one of my pet peeves in, in a lot of fiction. Yeah. Stop uh-huh. naming things Trojan when it's just because yeah. we know, all right, they're, they're going to be the bad guys. We get it. <laughs> you, you don't need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as a fan there. of the USC Trojans, that's not always true. Um, uh, <laughs> plus, oh, you're yeah, a Notre okay. Dame or UCLA fan. I said in fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> them being good is a fiction now, too. So it's fine. Um, um, so, the, but. The big thing, the big thing in this issue, right, just to get the basic gist of the story, is so, so John is is helping fight off the army and try to deal with brain cells himself. The the threat becomes so big though, uh, that he gets his Calex army to shrink down Metropolis and bottle it like Candor, um, which is actually important for the other stories because the other stories are both set in Metropolis, which are inside the 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 ball, right? Because right? they talk about how the Mister America ones like oh, there's a barrier that's appeared, like kind yeah. of thing. Uh, and, and it's important, he says, too, that they don't realize that they've been shrunk. Yes. Right? That they're, because this is just enough so he can fight brain cells, which is the, you know, a piece of Brainiac skin that got burned off that this company in Star Labs turned mm-hmm. into this tech and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I thought, which I didn't finish the other two stories just because, like, I ran out of time. Or, not time, but just like, I was like, okay, I'm done reading for now. Um but that said, I'll, I'll go back and read those. I'm like, I, I love that the one who was the most enthusiastic about this story yeah. is the one who didn't bother finishing but the rest of it. <laughs> it, was, it was just, again, timing, you know? Um, but I did like this John story a lot just because of... It did feel like there's a, a story being told that the writer's very cognizant of because right. there's history with, with Kara and, you know, like the 10 years he's been Superman... And just he's not his dad. I think those cons that, those concepts are good. What I don't like though is that it all devolves into Kara goes evil and fights John. And, it, and I say evil, it's a bit of a technicality. It's basically it's like, there's kryptonite. one of the chemicals or one of the minerals that are in kryptonite has been used mm-hmm. by brain cells to manipulate Kara. Uh, so, but I mean, it evolves into oh, Kara's being all evil and red kryptonite esque and fighting John. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just I was kind of rolling my eyes at that think, point. Yeah, and honestly, this issue or this part of this issue mm-hmm. felt a lot like to me the opposite of everything we just praised in the the first two Batman stories, where this mm-hmm. this felt overwritten. It felt like there was just dialogue and, and narration boxes everywhere. There was no breathing room. It was just throwing in massive ideas and 
and yeah. hoping something sticks. It didn't feel like a cohesive story, even yeah. though there's a lot of there's a lot of world yeah. building. There's not enough story. Yeah, I I I enjoyed and had a good time, like a fun time reading it because it felt like, oh, this is just a fun story. It's not like, whereas the last with the Batman, the next Batman, it felt like no, this is like an important story that's talking about society. Whereas this is just like, hey, remember comics are fun, you know? Right. Like, but I mean, the 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 outsiders one doesn't feel yeah. particularly important, right? In the in the same no, way, that feels that's true. Fun. This, I, I this just feels kind of messy to me. I, and I kind of like the mess, I guess. Like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I didn't have a bad time reading it. I, I read through it real quick. And, like, I didn't feel like, put like, okay, I have to finish this now. Like, I was, I got through it. And, like, yeah, it's a little I, bit annoying that I, I, they I'll... have to turn Kara on John. But there's there seems to be a dynamic between them that's, like... I, I am interested in this dynamic where Superman is gone for whatever you know period of yeah. time, and Kara is still there, kind of as the big cousin to to help. Yeah, well, and then there's there's doubts that Brain Cells brings on to John about like, oh, you're just like a Krypton or a human with a bit of Kryptonian in them. You're not special, you know. And like, mm. so just I feel like John's struggling with that. That you know what I mean, and that that's what Kara kind of represents is like, oh no, she's. She's supposed to be the Kryptonian legacy, you know. Um, I don't know. There's just there was a lot there. Almost I don't want to say subtext, but I'll, I'll, like, I mean I could all be wrong by the next issue, and it, it completely I, devolves into I, something I, I don't enjoy. But I like this one. I like some of the concepts. I like the history that it tries to kind of hint at, and I do appreciate the idea that like there's a, a sort of an opinion from some people inside the bottle city in the the next two stories where yeah. oh, you know superman you know the, the you know his old man would never have done this this is like a mistake right. that he's made that he's he shrunk the city down blah 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 well, um but well, I, I, just, I, I think the best thing i can say though is some of my feelings on this is when i got to the end of the story and i turned the page and realized there was backups i was like wait i thought that was already 40 something pages i thought i'd already read 40 odd pages and i hadn't i'd read like 20 like a normal amount it felt like it was double sized i i, I can't Vulture there um <laughs> I, I can't because everyone's reading experience is their own like i can't uh but no i will say too that the the one thing that struck with me was when he had went to talk with the people you know after kara had come in and saved them and they were kind of like you know you didn't sh you know she just saved them and then left to go do other things you know and that john stayed with them to talk with them and you know what i mean that to me that's him living his dad's legacy Right. It's not just wearing the suit and saving people. It's taking time for the people, you know, that yeah, are in but the city. Does that track so. with like what, traditionally that Kara is like that uncaring? I don't think it does. No, but I see I don't see it as uncaring. It's that she's how I read it was she's she's rushing around trying to do everything at once, right? Because she's she's wearing the full brunt of I'm the the you know the successor to Superman. And so yeah. she's like, I got other things to do, I'm gone. Whereas John's kind of like, he can take a little bit more. I don't I'm, know, it's almost like a Robin's dynamic. I'm curious. Like yeah, I'm curious to see what they do with Kara and her own two uh, issue mm -hmm. series, which this, you know, I think the first one comes out next week. Uh, not for sure at the end. Uh, but I, uh, it does feel to me a little bit here, like they're just doing whatever with her to service John's plot that they want to tell for John in this issue. And like I say, it's just a bit overrun. It was a bit messy. I felt like it was twice as long as it was. Uh, will I read the next one? We'll see. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> we'll see how I feel come next month. There's a there's a good chance I won't, and mainly because the one story I did like in this, which is the the Mister Miracle one, I believe continues in a different book from what I remember. From is that the, the Worlds at War one, the other Superman one? I, I think so. Yeah. Which it's weird that um, so if you in the uh, in the Batman one that we just read. Mm -hmm. The end of each story told you, right, continues in, you know, which issue, right? You know, so it was like, oh, continues in issue three for the backups. Uh, this Mr. Miracle one actually just says at the end, to be continued. It doesn't say where, which I think is a kind of a weird move, especially if it continues in a different book. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's odd. Uh, yeah, I hate to put a damper on Matt's uh, positivity here. That's but, fine. Uh... You guys, that's fine. <laughs> I like things you guys don't like all the time. It's fine. Uh, uh, all right, what were we rating this first story then, uh, Matt? We uh, I'm gonna have this one an eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half that. Half no, four. Oh, 
I'll, I'll go a bit. I mean, I'll go a straight five. Like, I do think I like some of the ideas. Uh, ours okay. I love it. I, I, it's, it's Tim's. I like Tim's a lot. So um, I'd like it more if I could see it. <laughs> All right. With that said, then we'll go ahead with Mister Miracle Sir, which is not obviously Scott Free. It's uh, a new character. What's the thing? Shiloh Norman. Oh no, Shiloh Norman. Is that not new? Yes. No. No, Shiloh no. Norman's been Kirby creation. Just... Is it yeah. okay? All right. Uh, clearly, I'm not as familiar Wait, with this, this version. I thought, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I thought Shiloh Norman was a, a Morrison from Seven Soldiers. <clears throat> I, I think yeah, Morrison used him there, but I think Morrison okay. did those things of you know picking obscure stupid things that have been in the past i, I could be wrong but i, I thought it was uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you guys talk about this because i want to read this uh and i'm gonna go back to read it but... yeah this is uh brandon easton writing this one with valentine d Lorondo on the art uh wow so no, connor's right uh jack kirby from there you go. Uh, mr miracle 15 uh back in 73 yeah I, so, clearly uh, i was unfamiliar with this this version of the character mm -hmm. um having not read seven soldiers and obviously not kirby's original stuff so um, one of those I would like to correct at some point. Uh, other one, not so much. Um, uh, Sabbath Seven Soldiers does not appeal to me for some reason. I don't know. It's, it's like it's, it's like the, the Morrison thing that's off in this weird corner that I'm just like I don't know. I don't know. You're you're enjoying uh, Animal Man though. I so, am. No, I mean so I might, maybe... might. Seven Soldiers might be your kind of Morrison. It may be. It may be. But at least oh, yeah, at face no. value, those things that appeal to me more. Uh, so. Yeah, it's just it's basically Mr. Miracle just like uh saving people, uh dealing with this new barrier. There's this, the, the main action comes from that these these sort of droids that show up and start causing chaos and have these big sort of almost uh, Doc Ock style like arms that pop out and come after yeah. them. Um mostly I mean this one felt like it was uh Better paced. Uh, I like the art. I thought the art was nice and simple and kind of inky. I think that's its strongest point. Is I think it's a it's a pretty simple story. It's mm -hmm. Mister Miracle trying to find a way to, to escape. Right, essentially. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's Mister Miracle one hundred and one, <laughs> really. But the art is really uh, dynamic for what this story is. Uh, it's very bold and stands apart from everything else in this book, at the very least. And I think because Batman had set me up for like these stories being full length. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be, have two backups, so I got to the two be continued right. and went, oh wait, what? That's over already? That went in quick. And then there was another one. I was like, oh, okay, it was only 10 pages. <laughs> right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's really simple. I, I mean, it's not a whole lot to say about it, but it was an easy... Like, after that first story, this felt like a breeze to read. <laughs> so I'll say yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. It went, this went in so quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm reading that, I would probably just give it like a, a, a nice solid seven. I wouldn't go any higher than that because I don't think the story is anything particularly special, but that's fair. I might give it a 7.5 just because I really like the art, but in the same kind of range. Yeah. Uh, and then the third story is a Guardian story, again, set within the uh, the, the, you know, bubble. the bubbled city. Uh, yeah. Or the ball, I should say ball. Is it bubbled? I don't know why. <laughs> it looks like a big bubble from the inside. Uh, so, uh, we have this story with Guardian, uh, who is starting off by driving this ambulance that's on fire, and he's on a race against time, but then we then we go back in time. Uh, I will say, this was kind of a mixed bag, this story. Mm -hmm. Again, there's some things I like about it. I thought it did too many, like, uh, there was too many panels that said, so many hours earlier, with then, then it did it again, then it did it again. Like, so there's 24 hours earlier at the start, which is fine, because you have the tease of, like, what's coming up later. That's a common story mechanic. Mm -hmm. But then later on, it does it again for like one panel of Jimmy uh, with 15 minutes ago. But there's also a 72 hours later at one point. And... It's, it's all over. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I was under the impression from the first story that it was uh, the, the, for the people in Metropolis, it was a bit of a mystery of what happened. Mm -hmm. Whereas this was just straight up like, oh man, who'd have thought Soup would put the whole city in a snow globe? Yeah, I assume this is set a little bit later than the Mr. Miracles because the Mr. Miracle ones, like, clearly it was a mystery at first. Like, what is going yeah. on? That seems to be a bit later when people understand the, to some well, extent. Actually, do you know what? I tell you, but it does mention that it's six months in, so I guess they've figured stuff out. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Um, you would like to think they'd have some sort of idea after six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that is fair. That, that, that was me on that one. Yeah, but uh, so that's the evil villain that kidnaps Jimmy, uh, and has has a bomb on this this ambulance, which is what the Guardian is trying to like get away from safety. So actually, it ends in a cliffhanger where Guardian seems to have driven it into the water off the bridge and his shield is floating in the water so did he die did he not uh, yeah um 
this story actually has one of the uh, you know when I mentioned earlier the, the the flow thing that I had a problem with mm-hmm. uh, with with the way it draws your eye. There's a two page spread uh, with the guardian. He's like jumping over some rooftops. Is kind of the look of it. Oh, I actually agree with this because I this also was confused by this. Horrendous because it starts in the top left. You've got a narration <clears> box. You follow it across as as he jumps across the roof, and as he lands, there's a narration box right there. So you want to follow it and go straight down. And you go down, and then you realize, oh, hang on, there's half a goddamn page I haven't read yet that needed to come first. Yeah. It's, it's kind of awkward. It's a really awkward layout, because, like you say, him jumping across at the top leads your eye that way. And because... And it would be fine if there was no narration boxes there, but because there's a narration box right under him that then leads down the page, you naturally... And most comics that do this would want you to go down that side and sort of maybe work your way back around, like, a sort of circle. But Which it doesn't. is what I assumed was going to do, because, it, because that... Do you know as well, I think if there was like some separation for that first narration box where he lands, if that was distinctly in the panel below, that was like, no, there is some separation here. Go back yes. across. But because it pops out across uh, up a little bit into the the upper space, yeah, because it fact, really makes you want to read it. Because in in the two buildings, there's like other panels of things, and if that narration box was just inside the building, it would it would just feel like okay, so it's a two page layout with like a horizontal thing all the way across, and then you'd have the two blocks of four in the middle. And yeah. then you'd have the the horizontal one at the bottom, and it'd be fine. But as it is, it's really confusing. Uh, yeah, it's it's a mess of a page. I'd, I'd forgotten really about it, but as soon as you mentioned that you're talking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I did have a problem with this. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm thinking about it. Uh, yeah. So mixed bag. Uh, so I mean, the Superman one overall, this uh, Superman of Metropolis one. Um, I, I don't know. I I I I feel really kind of mixed to negative on it overall yeah i i don't think i can give overall i don't think i can give it above a six given that i liked the middle one but that was like 10 pages and the other two were just kind of a mess for me i i, I like the middle one as a seven i thought the first one was a five the third one because we haven't read that on its own yet yeah uh, I mean, probably probably another four for me actually to be honest yeah i mean yeah i'll probably be similar in the sense that i'll give it another five so I mean, I guess at this point, I can just like, average it at 5.5 and call it a day. Actually, no, it'd be 5.3. Yeah, see, but you're, cause you're okay with that, because you didn't enjoy the first story that much. <laughs> right? It's not like the Batman one. I don't want to sink it. Yeah, but I really like two of those stories in the Batman one, whereas this and one... That's what I'm saying! Yeah. Right, you could justify this one. Yeah, that's one I like. I really didn't like two of them, and then one I was like, yeah, it's alright. <laughs> like, so, I mean, the scale here is a lot lower, unfortunately, which is a shame. Uh, so hope- hopefully the world's at war, the other- the one that's got actual Superman, uh, elsewhere is going to be Which, yeah. better. Uh, that one I think is written by the guy who's taking over, uh, I think Superman so, Mansion yeah, so hopefully thing. that's good, because that's actually, you know- That's yeah. actually like a bit of a barometer for it. The, the funny thing is, though, at the same time, even if I don't love it, I'm, I can't take it completely as a sign of the ongoing book, because it's- this is such a separate, like, in the future two-parter, or, or whatever, that- yeah, um, unless it's just bad writing as opposed to bad ideas. Yeah, because cause I, I think I've got an example of this later, honestly, when I'm talking mm-hmm. about someone mm-hmm. taking over a book in the future state issues, maybe only representing what the run's going to be to a point and not really be able to use mm-hmm. it as a gauge. But anyway, that's uh, Future State mm-hmm. Superman of Metropolis. Mm-hmm.